How does a special educational needs coordinator in a large inner city primary school organize SEN provision and what advice can she give? We visit a school with an innovative approach to inclusion. The day begins for Senko Claire Tyrrell at 8.15 when she drops off her son at the nursery at Morden Mount Primary School in South East London. Morden Mount's um, a large primary school, about 450 children, um, plus we have two nurseries with full and part-time places. The area um, is considered one that's uh, deprived um, economically, but also culturally as well. Some of the housing is temporary, so it does mean that we, that impacts on our mobility. Around a quarter of the children have um, special needs. We've got a high percentage of free school meals, and the school speaks around 30 languages. Right from the outset, what I wanted to do was uh, work with children with special needs. Come on, down with me. Come on. So I did my teaching qualification here at Morden Mount, actually, and while, whilst I was doing it, um, I worked as a classroom assistant, and I've stayed on. Claire has scheduled a meeting with a literacy expert from an EBD unit to discuss a pupil in year four. Severe literacy problems. Severe, very severe. severe. And you're sitting on a time bomb, really, because mm. his behaviour is going to deteriorate. So what he does need, and I don't know how you can organise that, he needs 15 minutes a day individual time with someone. Yeah, and we, I don't, we so, can organise that. OK, yes. fantastic. Yep. So in terms of his standardised assessment, of which you've got a copy here, mm. he scored minus six. So he's un... Yeah. He, he, he couldn't score even one word. Mm -hmm. If he's in a mood where he doesn't want to do anything, he won't do it. No. Yeah. And it's hard enough just trying to keep him in class at the moment. For you to keep him in class, it's a credit to him to stay in there. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, and also school, school, for you, it's like a real, it's yeah. a real start for him. He's really bonded mm. really well. You're with doing anything. really, really, really well. I'm, huh. I'm surprised you're actually keeping him in class because his literacy is that low. Yeah. I think you have to be able to organise. I think you have to be able to prioritise. Um, I, th I think you have to be a good communicator because I, I mean I spend you know probably 75% of my day um, communicating with children, parents, class teachers, outside agencies. It's nice to see you. Um, I'm well. I think the key difficulty is time management but when you're coordinating yourself between lots of different meetings carrying large amounts of information in your head it's imperative that you make sure that, um, that you can manage your time. to be observing um, Max, at 10.30, um, Tracy isn't able to come to the It's very easy to get bogged down in the paperwork. Shame. And that can mean that you lose focus on the priorities, which are the children. Morning. Hello, everyone. Morning. Buongiorno. Some of the children's uh, life stories are quite, are quite difficult. We take um, a lot of refugee children some who are quite traumatised. Um, we have dealt with children with, um, you know, sort of elements of post-traumatic stress. We deal with um, bereaved children, children who have been permanently excluded from other schools. We have, um, you know, possibly children that have been trafficked, children who have uh, suffered abuse in their families or within their communities. So, so the range of sort of need that we do see that affects the emotional and behavioural side of our children, um, you know, is, is really very broad. Claire runs the school council. She is not only the Senko, but also assistant head with responsibility for inclusion, citizenship, PHSE and child protection. And she is on the senior management team. I think inclusion um, would not work in a whole, sc in a whole school approach unless the Senko role, the special needs role, was part of the senior management team. And I mean, I think here, the fact that I'm, that I'm an assistant head really gives, um, really, you know, puts inclusion at the, at the heart of everything that we're planning, with, uh, planning for the school. I haven't found out about the cheerleading club. Did anybody else ask about it? You, did you ask about yeah, that? Uh, yes. Most of the girls want it, but boys want to be mascots. I mean, I believe that it's our role um, as a school to, uh, to enable children to be able to study alongside their peers because school is much more than just achievement. There's the whole um, hidden curriculum, there's all, you know, there's the, it's much broader than literacy and numeracy. And so I do feel that 
children benefit from being with their friends and also not necessarily having um, the type of support that might differentiate them from their friends. The boys want pom poms. Oh, they're excellent. That's really good. Okay, so it's popular with all year six, so year six might be quite interested. Yeah? At a multi agency meeting to discuss further support for the boy with literacy problems, Claire meets with the head teacher, class teacher, attendance officer, and educational psychologist. The boy's mother couldn't attend. I mean, we've just got his attendance. His attendance, apart from the two days that he was sick, his attendance is 90%, and it's nearly 91%. It's got you know, 90% still has a dramatic effect on his ability to learn. Oh, yes. absolutely. I, mean, you know, when, I don't want the mum to get the message that 90% is no, all right. Okay. No, no. But more, I think more importantly than that is his lateness, because mm. I'm working with him almost every morning during assemblies, mm. and when he's coming late, which is 50% of the time, yeah, that doesn't, um, it doesn't happen, no. so it doesn't matter whether he's here. Coordinating the different types of support services yeah. is a large part of my role, but I also have to be able to coordinate them together um, into multi-agency meetings, which are much more time efficient um, and, and have much better, you know, sort of problem solution focused outcomes. Lovely. So the, so the actions that we've agreed are Evie's going to plan for new support timetable after half term. Um, Gillian's going to write to um, Mum um, about lateness and the impact that's having on his learning. Place to be support will continue. Um, the outreach service will continue um, from, the, uh, from Waterside um, and carry on with the visual incentives. Claire also decides to request statutory assessment. Only three children in the whole school are statemented. The local education authority only gives statements to low-frequency complex special needs. The intention is that the money saved is then devolved to primary schools and outreach services. We've got LSAs attached to all of our classes, which means that early intervention work can happen without children necessarily fulfilling certain criteria or going through a very, very lengthy statementing process. Of course, there are children that we know will still go through that process, but they will also have access to LSA, outreach work, um, that type of support um, before they reach the stage of us requesting statutory assessment. So, in a sense, the work is already done, or some part of the work is already done at a much earlier stage. In the afternoon, Claire teaches Year 3. My own class has a range of needs. Um, I've got a couple of children who um, have just joined whose English is very limited, one of whom is a French speaker. I think it's really important for me as a SENCO to be able to um, put into practice some of the ideas that I've been uh, asking people to use over the past three years. It's, it's also very helpful if I'm in class to understand the types of pressures that class teachers are under and, and also to have a realistic expectation of what we can expect from our class teachers as, and learning support assistants. Do you want to try it one more time? My we spend around about 10 times our, our delegated budget for um, LSAs and that's you know that's a decision that we've made as a school because we recognized that the level of need in class demanded that level of that adult to child ratio. I think that by having learning support assistants that are able to work with all children in the class doesn't necessarily distinguish children or you know mark them out as being different from their peers. I think the danger of, of the model with LSAs or, or you know, support being deployed um, you know, to sort of kind of sit alongside a child doesn't actually uh, support their independence. They need to have time as an adult maybe to learn specific skills, but then also to have a range of opportunities to apply those skills. The school has introduced their own approach to inclusion and Claire is part of the core group responsible. Every term a progress meeting is held for each class to discuss the individual needs of every pupil not making expected progress, not just those on the SEN register. Part of our assessment process is um, a termly class progress meeting. So we're able to talk about the factors that are, we're able to 
to scrutinise the achievement of the children in maths um, and in reading and in writing and ascertain from that the children that aren't making um, expected progress and we're able to put in place um, LSA support, um, outside agency support um, or other types of pastoral support, it could be after school clubs, it could be engaging the child much more in the running of the school, it could be, um, it, it could be engaging parents with, with learning in the community, it could be attendance, child protection, whatever. Um, but we are able to then plan for those individuals. First child I'd like to discuss... Today it's a class progress meeting for pupils in year three. We have concerns about him insofar as he's a very able child. Um, orally, he is uh, very articulate, very good with ideas, but he finds it very, very difficult to take those ideas and to put them down on paper. The class progress plans are really valuable in helping us to deploy our resources for particular groups of children. He's very tired yeah, and very emotional. emotional. It's also impacting mm -hmm. his um, uh, ability to, to, to write. What, after carrying out a needs analysis of all of the classes and also having the class progress meetings, what we're able to do now is to sit down and decide where, whose expertise we're going to de deploy where and which other outside agencies we may need to call on to support a particular group of children or an individual. Wow. Has it taken you ever such a long time to do yeah, these? About three or four days. About three or four days. Mm -hmm. And what's your favourite fact about one of Henry VIII's wives? Uh, um, Anne, Boleyn, um, Anne Boleyn had six fingers, that's why he chopped her um, head off. Right. Yeah, and would you have liked to be married to Henry VIII? No way. Of course, one of the other pitfalls when you are dealing with lots of very difficult cases and lots of very, you know, young, very vulnerable children that have been through very traumatic um, experiences is that you can you can tend to sort of you know take the pain on yourself and it, it can be quite difficult to leave it behind on a Friday. We're very lucky here because we our counselling service offers um, offers um, supervision for members of staff that are having that maybe are in contact with you know very traumatised children so it does mean that the, the type of super, supervision they offer us is um, enables us to be able to talk through cases talk through our approaches and it does um, enable us to be able to get you know elements of closure towards the end of the week so on Friday although we can't ever totally do this we're in a much better position to be able to go home without taking that uh, emotional baggage with us. Claire's day is not over yet she still has phone calls and paperwork to complete to ensure all children get the support they need. Um, it could be on a letter but it's a different... Um... Every child can achieve in mainstream school and that's the vision that I stick with. Although I know that there are always going to be caveats to that and there are always going to be challenges. Children do have that right to be with their friends and they do have a right to be in their local community school and that, you know, and they shouldn't be away from their peers. And that's what I have, you know, obviously in my head when I'm, when I'm planning support and, and I'm planning for inclusion. It is particularly satisfying with those children when, uh, you know, when they do achieve at school, when we, when we are able to support them through difficult circumstances and, you know, for them to have, you know, the prospects of a, of a, good, of a good future ahead of them.